Hello and welcome to another standard video here in the new Bloomboro meta. Today we're taking a look at a pretty broken combo, which is Innkeeper's Talent alongside Vraska Betrayal Sting. This card was voted on by my supporters on Patreon. A 2-mana class enchantment starts out by saying at the beginning of combat on our turn put a plus one plus one counter on a target creature we control. We've seen this effect before and 2-mana is a pretty competitive price for it. Then we can level it up. For a single green permanence we control with counters on them have a ward 1, so now all those creatures with plus 1 counters have a bit of extra protection, but it also applies to planeswalkers for instance that enter with loyalty counters, and that's going to be very relevant with a level 3 innkeeper's talent for 4 additional mana if we would put 1 or more counters on a permanent or player, put twice that many counters on it instead. So this is reminiscent of a doubling season, which also happens to synergize very nicely with planeswalkers walkers as we can now play them they enter with twice the amount of loyalty often letting us instantly ultimate the planeswalkers to set up some devastating effects and it's no different here with Vraska, Betrayal's Sting, which can be played for 5 mana and 2 life, or 6 mana, and both of them will actually end up with enough loyalty to instantly ultimate, because you might think that doubling the remaining 4 loyalty if we cast it for 5 mana is 8, but actually the way the replacement effects work is we first double the 6 loyalty, and then subtract 2 loyalty from the Phyrexian cost, so we still end up with a 10 loyalty Vraska if we cast it for 5 mana and 2 life, so we can immediately use a minus 9 ultimate, which normally would only put 9 poison counters on the opponent, which is nice, but often still requires us to untap with Vraska to proliferate with a 0 ability to get them up to 10 poison counters to win the game, but thanks to our innkeeper's talent, we also double the number of poison counters we apply to the opponent, instantly applying 18 poison and instantly winning us the game. So this is a 2 card combo, just a level 3 innkeeper's talent, and then potentially a 5 mana Vraska is enough to win the game. So that's the core combo we're building around. Vraska is also pretty nice if we don't have the talent as a card draw engine that lets us proliferate, allowing us to put additional plus one counters on our creatures for instance, and then the minus two gives us a bit of removal, and then by drawing cards with Vraska we can potentially find the innkeeper's talent. And then since we are playing with a talent, it makes sense to include other creatures that have plus one counter synergies, but at the same time, we also want to be digging towards our two combo pieces. So the perfect solution is to include lots of creatures with the explore mechanic. This gives us some random bodies to accumulate plus one counters while still digging towards those combo pieces. The scout we can play on turn one, letting us explore, potentially drawing into a land, or we can decide to put a non-land card in the graveyard or keep it on top of the deck. So a turn one one scout into a turn to innkeeper's talent immediately lets us accumulate those plus one counters so they don't go to waste so that's also important and sometimes it's worth it to play a jade light spelunker for x equals zero if we have a turn to talent coming up just to pick up those plus one counters now we don't get to explore in that case but if we have a lot of man available then jade light spelunker becomes an excellent way to dig towards those combo pieces as we get to explore x times where x is any additional mana we can sink into the ability and spelunker also benefits from a level 3 innkeeper's talent especially because every time we explore we have the opportunity to double the plus one counter from the explore trigger so let's say we cast this for x equals 5 with a level 3 talent in play we find a null land card on the top of the deck immediately we can keep it on top and now instead of getting five plus one counters we'll get 10 of them instead ending up with an 11 11 spelunker which can also just win the game by itself and then at 2 mana we're playing the new Tender Wild Guide from Bloomborough, a mana creature that can tap for a mana of any color, but it also has Offspring for 2 mana, so we can pay 4 mana total to get 2 mana creatures, so that can give us that additional mana to start leveling up or talent or cast Vraska. And then we can also tap the Wild Guide to put a plus one plus one counter on this creature, so that also synergizes quite well with the talent, as it will have that Ward 1 on level 2, and can maybe double the counters on level 3. And then we can also potentially play defense with a wild guide, let the opponent attack into it, and then block and before damage still tap it to put an additional counter on it, so that can also make it a bit bigger. And then at 3 mana, I'm playing Sentinel of the Nameless City as another way to make map tokens and therefore explore. This one also has Vigilance, so good on offense and defense. 
And then our final creature is Kami of Whispered Hopes, which is also incredibly synergistic with all the plus one counters going around, especially with Innkeeper's Talent, because if one plus one counter would be put on a permanent we control, we get to put an additional plus one counter on that permanent instead. And that additional counter can also get doubled by a level three Innkeeper's Talent. So now let's say we just have a level three Innkeeper's Talent in play alongside Kami, then one counter all of a sudden turns into four plus one counters, so we might have a five five Kami, and then now now it can tap to make 5 mana, because it makes X mana of any one color, where X is the Kami's power. And then all that additional mana is going to be very useful for casting a large Jade Light Spelunker, or just to start leveling up a talent if we haven't done so already, and maybe deploy Vraska in the same turn to instantly win the game. And then rounding out the deck, we do have some interaction to keep up with all the aggro decks in the format. Four copies of Cutdown, four copies of Go for the Throat, and then even two copies of Choking Miasma, giving all creatures minus two, minus two, can even kick it to give us a plus one plus one counter on a creature, especially good if we can double the counter with Kami or Innkeeper's Talent as a way to maybe even save the Kami itself as it would grow up to a 3-3. Three, three. So this can also be very effective against aggro decks, especially the Boros Tokens deck, which tends to make lots of one ones and then the mana base i'm not playing with the creature land instead favoring the underground mortuary as a way to surveil since we are actively looking for those combo pieces so i think that's more relevant than the creature land but could potentially play a mix of both and then lunar waste and blooming marsh as dual lands and then plenty of basics so yeah that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the play we do not have any of our combo pieces but I think it's still a keepable hand. Got a good mana. Can maybe start with Mortuary or start with Scouts and on turn two we can Surveil. Facing red-white, so Choking Miasma is looking good. Don't need another land. So turn three, I could Miasma, depending on the board states. Don't really want to take out my own Kami. Although, if we kick Miasma, then we can end up with a 3-3. Three, three. Although I think this is good enough to wipe the board already. Because next turn they could potentially start convoking stuff. Although we did just draw a go for the throat. So yeah, maybe playing Kami, and then next turn we can cast Miasma with Kicker. And hope they deploy more small creatures. Opponent unearths Frontliner. Scout is happy to chum block here. Is this another demolition? All right. Well, glad we waited. So play this with kicker. And this now only taps for one mana, so I'm gonna wait on playing the Spelunker. Could keep this back, but if they play haste creature, it's with a recruiter. So a three two would attack past a three three. So now Warden can start growing. Opponent's down to one card in hand at least. And a wild guide. So we've got a few options. I think taking out Warden is probably the way to go here. And then I can still play a wild guide with Offspring. And then next turn I can sink a ton of mana into the Spelunker. To take out Warden now, keep up Go for the Throat, which could take out the Evangelist, but right now it's not a huge threat. Opponent unearths Frontliner. And a case of the Gateway Express. So I guess we can wait and see what they try and target. And then maybe Go for the Throat in response. 
So now taking out the bats, since if I take out Evangelist, they get a replacement token. So that worked out. And we don't have the best of blocks. So I'll take five. And our opponent explodes. That's a shame. So this turn I would have been able to cast this uh, Spelunker for X equals, let's have a look, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's pretty likely to find one of our combo pieces, especially if we find the talent, then we can start growing all our creatures and just win with damage instead of needing the combo. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. We've got Maybe turn one Spelunker, actually, so it can immediately pick up a plus one counter. If I play a turn two Innkeeper's Talents. Going for a turn two Wild Guide is also reasonable. But the sooner we get the plus one counters going, the better. And this might be more of a beatdown draw as opposed to a combo kill. Opponent also black green with Innkeeper's Talent, so they might be trying to do something similar. Well, we don't really have any interaction for the opponent's enchantment. Yeah, maybe this turn play Wild Guide, level up the talents. And I'll put a counter here, so... It has that Ward 1 protection. Preacher's next. Okay, so I can go for the Throats. I'll be unable to level up the Talent once again. So is that to play versus a level up Talent? Tap the Wild Guide to get two counters. And Spelunker can go up to a 4-4. And then next turn I can maybe go for the Throat Preacher. Yeah, I kind of want to keep leveling up the talent if possible. Maybe I actually just play Attack Plants that way. Next turn I get to play a bigger Spelunker. So Preacher gets a free turn to maybe attack. Although they might be concerned about keeping a blocker back. Let's get another one. At least they're behind on leveling up the innkeeper's talent. In case they have their own Vraska. Well, I guess we can just win right now. Easy peasy. And for what it's worth, I could play Vraska for just 5 mana. I'll just demonstrate it here. Paying 2 life. Because the way the replacements work is we basically double the loyalty and then subtract two loyalty from the Phyrexian cost. So just to showcase it here, still enters with 10 loyalty despite me playing it for uh, 5 and 2 life. Minus 9 is 18 poison. Win the game on the spot. And that's the combo. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with... Uh, Keepable hand. Lots of mana to eventually sink into the Spelunker with some plus one counter synergy as well. Facing a red aggro, turn one Ruckus plotted. Now play the wild guide. And then next turn we may need to go for the throats. Otherwise, Kami into Scout looks good. Pona now plots a slick shot as well. So it's going to be a lot of damage coming our way. But I'm still going to deploy Kami instead of keeping up mana for Go for the Throat when they may or may not deploy the Slick Shot. And then Vraska is fine to keep. So we have one of our two combo pieces. Spelunker can look for the talent. And Scout picks up an extra counter thanks to Kami. So 
So let's see how much damage they can deal. Another Ruckus, so they will get two replacement cards if we take out the Slick Shot. And then Kami down, take nine damage. So Spelunker, I want to play for X equals two here. Or I can just play Vraska, turn Slick Shot into a treasure. Uh, that's also reasonable. But then we're not setting up the combo as well, in case I find the talent. So, yeah, I think Spelunker for two is fine. And then don't really need another Kami. Found a land. And hit for three. And then Wild Guide can either cast Go for the Throat or potentially put a plus one counter on itself. Uh, Might of the Meek in response go for the throat, so they draw one fewer card. But Demonic Ruckus still draws a card. So we'll see. Hardfire Hero. That one we can block on the ground at least. And a Challenger I'm happy to trade. Their opponent hangs back, and the Choking Miasma is looking mighty fine. So, Wild Guide can grow itself, and then Spelunker can be rescued with a Choking Miasma. And then a the cool thing about Miasma is that it decreases the hero's power, so it doesn't deal any damage on the way out. Probably could have attacked first, actually, but... I think I'll just keep my blockers back in case of haste creatures. And our opponent concedes, so yeah, don't even need the combo sometimes. Choking Miasma can uh, sometimes get it done as well as we rank up. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Just missing our builder's talents. Can surveil on one. And Spelunker... Is a decent follow-up to a Kami, although I already have some expensive spells. I guess I'll still keep it, since if I don't need to keep up Go for the Throat, it's a turn 2 play. But our opponent's got to scamp. So can expect some pump spells from our opponents. Yeah, I'll keep up Go for the Throat here. If they just hit me for one, that's fine. Okay, maybe take out their 2-drop. But I didn't want to have to keep up Go for the Throats and then have to skip out on my 3 mana play. Points just got all the 1 drops here. Too bad we don't have a Choking Miasma in hand. So I'll take out the Heartfire. Although Scamp can also deal damage to my creatures when it dies. Although it's easier for them to keep growing the Heartfire. Another go for the throat. All right, I'll play this Sentinel over Kami, I think, just because Kami easily dies to the scamps. Although they can likely still attack into the Sentinel if they have a monstrous rage. Yep, so I'll have to take it. It's gonna be a Bane Splitter. So yeah, things didn't quite work out, keeping up that go for the throat on turn two. Also Monstrous Rage, so they could sack for 6 damage. And they're just going face. Alright, so now I can attack. Maybe after sacking the map here, I wouldn't mind an extra land. But I kinda need to keep up go for the throats. So I can block the scamp and in response to any pump effect take it out. So now we're at four. And then Wild Guide with Offspring is an option. 
could go Kami and then Explore. On the Kami itself, probably, so it picks up more power. Yeah, the limiting factor here is mana, potentially. If we find a Builder's Talent, I need to level it up before playing Vraska. So Kami potentially gives us access to the most mana. Don't need scouts. Cell sword, so yeah, they had the sacrifice effect. Forced to just play it as a creature now. Alright, so next up, maybe explore once again with the map on Kami in case we hit a non land. And then it might be time for Spelunker. Found a talent, perfect. So now I can make five mana with a Kami. Can make a huge Jade Light Spelunker. Have to watch out for the opponents with an Act of Treason effect, potentially stealing my creature as well. But yeah, Sentinel can attack. Could always play Vraska and draw into the talents and play it. Just want to make sure I leave enough blockers back. And drawing down to 3 life is a little bit risky. It's 3 mana to equip. Turning this into treasure gives some additional mana, which is also bad. Because if they have another cell sword plus a pump spell, I just die. But I don't know if there's a way I can really beat it here. Alright, our opponent scoops it up, so... We were probably going to be able to combo off next turn, and if our opponent concedes, I assume they don't have a way to uh, kill me next turn. So we would have gotten there. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got a keeper missing our innkeeper's talent. But otherwise, we still have a functional hand. Facing a red aggro. Alright, so this is going to be a true test. Found the talent. Now, getting to enough mana where we can set up the combo is going to be a little bit tricky still. And go for the throat is tempting against Mono Red. Might have to get rid of it just to look for additional lands, since Lanar Waste is also going to be a little bit painful if I need to keep using it for black mana. So I think I still get rid of it here, but it's a close call. And then there's a chance I can just make my ground creatures large enough to block. Bono keeps up 2 mana, found a Swamp. So, if I go for Innkeeper's Talent, there's a decent chance they take out the Scouts. So be it. I think it's still good since it sets up Kami to pick up 2 plus 1 counters next turn. Alright, and then I'm happy playing defense. Swiss Spear keeps attacking. Yeah, maybe wait one more turn to block. They didn't have a play last turn, so I'm wondering what they're hanging on to. Maybe it is just a bunch of pump spells, so let's take it for now. And then we can also maybe get to a point where we go for the throat in response. It was just a bane splitter for now, but I imagine they have another way to enable prowess. Another talent. Okay, so... Maybe now the safest option is to just level up the talent once, keep up go for the throat, instead of going for Kami. Because if they do have a lightning strike, I would rather have them take out the scout than the Kami. So I guess we'll level up, opponent kind of needs to respond with a lightning strike or else we have ward. Alright, that worked. Up to a 4-4. Four, four. And then I can still block, make them use a pump spell, and then respond with go for the throat. So our opponent needs to make the first move, which puts us at an advantage. Second Swiss Spear. Opponent passes. I think I still want to use my mana here. And drew a cutdown, not bad. So I get to play Kami, keeping up cutdown. 
if the auto tapper lets me. And then it's kind of interesting since I would actively want the extra plus one counters on Kami, but it's also an easy target for removal. So maybe for now I still target the scouts, that way it picks up two plus one counters thanks to the Kami's ability. And then now we've got an excellent blocker with still a cutdown available to respond. And then next turn I can put counters on Kami to let it tap for additional mana. So your opponent wants to equip, would make it a 3-2. So still not big enough to survive cutdown or attack into the scout. And our opponent scoops it up, so didn't even need to show them the combo, but we were very close to assembling it, since next turn, let's say our opponent tapped out, I could maybe activate the Innkeeper's Talent's final ability, then if we would put one or more counters on a permanent or player put twice that many. So with the Kami's ability, how does that actually work? So that many plus one are put on that instead. So do we get four counters total? I think so. And if that's the case, then second main I could still play Vraska and then uh, immediately win the game with the Vraska ultimate. So yeah, with four counters on Kami, taps for five mana, and that's enough. Even with the uh, reduced loyalty, we still have 10 total, which is enough to ultimate. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Missing our Innkeeper's Talents. We also don't have removal, so against Monorad that could be a problem. Although just top deck to cut down. So I'll hang on to it for now. And then hope to respond to a pump spell. So for now we'll take the one. And our opponent plots a slick shot. Alright, that's gonna make things a little trickier. Still probably want to play the wild guide on turn two. And then our opponent gets a chance to deploy their hand. So yeah, the plot mechanic's a good one. We made it pretty obvious that we're holding a cutdown. But it's still going to be useful later. Right, Codebreaker and then a shock. So we lose everything. Question now is whether I need to cut down before they untap and potentially cast multiple pump spells. So just play another wild guide. The auto tapper keeps up green for Spelunker, but of course we prefer the black. It's gonna be another code breaker, probably have to trade at this point. So only one card left. Alright, the fact that Heartfire didn't attack sort of implies that they don't have anything. So maybe it is fine to take care of the slick shot now. Or they might have been in a spot where they know about cutdown, so they don't want to be the ones to make the first move with the pump spell, but they actually have one. So if I try and cut down slick shot, they save it. How relevant is that one extra damage? It could certainly matter. Yeah, I think I still need to go for it here. Alright, that worked. And now we can play Wild Guide with Offspring. Go for the Throat, also an option. Still kind of like the Offspring here, since it sets up a bigger Spelunker next turn. Plus I can maybe trade off the 1-1 one -one token here. They may have another Codebreaker in hand gonna be a challenger instead. And now an all-out attack. So they must have top decked the challenger then, and then um, they still don't have anything else in hand I presume. So I'll try this. Or at seven. And a scamp. Alright, so I could cast Vraska paying two life. It's not ideal here. I think I prefer Spelunker. Can do it x equals 4. And the scout can go. And we get to surveil. Alright, found our innkeeper's talents, so we'll see if we can assemble the combo. A 2-2 Spelunker smaller than I would have hoped. 
So if they have a way to enable prowess, I could be in trouble. You're just gonna trade, that's fine. And another scamp. Alright, so now I can play the talents. Potentially level it up twice. But that would leave me tapped out, so just level up once, pass a turn. And then Wild Guide can also grow itself after blocking. And we still have Go for the Throat available. So we're in decent shape. Cell Sword. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. So I can respond with Go for the Throat on Challenger to prevent the damage from Cell Sword at least, which is what I'll do. And our opponents found another Cell Sword with a Valiant trigger. So they're gonna sack it once again, and now we are within burn range. It did not give me priority to grow the wild guide, which is unfortunate, since it could have been a 4-4 here. But uh, we'll just have to level up Innkeeper's talents, and then I'm one mana short of playing Vraska to win the game. So if they top deck Lightning Strike, I'm gonna be pretty sad. Uh, otherwise, we should have it. So I'll make sure to put a stop in the opponent's end step to grow the wild guide. Looks like they maybe found a code breaker. Yep, face down card. And how many instants and sorceries are there? Just a one shock. So it's not too bad. And then end of turn, get an extra two counters now. And then play Vraska and win the game. Well, that was a close one. But there we have it, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, we've got a Keeper. No one drop to set up the Innkeeper's talents, but uh, turn 3 Sentinel is still good. Alright, the rest is unfortunate here, can take our talents before we get it down. Wild Guide it is. And then next turn I could play Sentinel and immediately explore. And I'll explore on the Wild Guide in case they were hanging on to removal. Found a land. Our hand is all spot removal, so we're good against creatures. Better opponent might be more of a control deck. So let's hit with a Sentinel. Do I attack with Wild Guide or do I grow it? I think I'll start putting counters on it first. And don't need another go for the throat. Yeah, Innkeeper's Talent would have been doing some work in the meantime. Opponent might be sitting on a board wipe if they're being this passive. And we just keep on drawing removal spells. Alright, now the wild guide can attack. Opponent's finally gonna bitter triumph. And do we get to explore? We do. Well, at least now if we top deck Vraska, we can leverage our Planeswalker. So that's still good. And Cruelty of Gix, yeah, so... Probably starting from Chapter 2. Nope, still gonna have a look. At least I'll miss. And we found Vraska, perfect. So I could speed up the opponent's Saga, but that's probably not to my advantage. Opponent getting to search sooner and then reanimate something a turn earlier. I mean, maybe it is still good since if they're planning to set up their graveyard for the reanimation, they may not have as much time. 
but your opponent can just get another bitter triumph search that up and then in response to the third chapter cast it discarding some creature to reanimate so i don't think there's much of a point in uh, proliferating it Blunker was a fine top deck. So yeah, I don't think Vraska is going to stick around for long, since opponent is playing Bitter Triumph after all. And Liliana can take care of the Sentinel. When I win, you're telling me one of your friends has to this one only reanimates creatures and not Planeswalkers at least. And the opponent did have another Bitter Triumph in hand. Found the talents, so that's maybe worth playing in case they have another duress. But maxing out the Spelunker is also tempting. Yeah, let's just cast this for x equals 5. Look for another Vraska. There it is. And then I could once again explore, but there's probably no point since 4-4 already survives an opposing cutdown, for instance. I guess I can get back my creature as well. Goes for a wild guide. Could have gotten the sentinel, so maybe they've got Breach the Multiverse in hand. Right, Rush of Dread. Sacrifice half of my creatures, discard half of my hand, round it up. So, may as well cut down. And discard three cards. So, Miasma, go for the throat. And maybe a land. Can still play talent, level up twice. Or maybe better to get Vraska down. Drop since their opponent can still take up Liliana. So at least her opponent's top decking, Atraxa in the graveyard, so that's what they're trying to reanimate with her cruelty. Alright, so play Vraska. Even though I would prefer to play it after leveling up talents, but then Liliana can just make me discard it, so. And then I have to keep Blooming Marsh in hand to discard to Liliana. Alright, we'll see what happens. Opponent is down to 5 as well in the meantime. Me. So we can start by plussing, find another talent. I think I'm still better off just leveling this up twice. And then keep land in hand to discard. So now if I top deck another Vraska, I just win the game. But a Spelunker is going to be pretty awesome too. So play this for the max amount. Either way, if I level up Vraska next turn, I can ultimate it. Although our opponent will get to reanimate an Atraxa and potentially find some answers. Better Triumph for Vraska comes to mind. At least they won't be able to answer my enchantment all that easily. So yeah, let's Spelunker for a bunch, x equals 6, then they can just minus Liliana to take it out. So I guess x equals 3 or 4 might be good enough. And we'll also pick up a ton of counters from the talent. And then Wild Guide could be a fine draw, although it can maybe be pickier and look for another Vraska. Alright, there it is. So we've got to win on the top of our deck. Can empty my hands. Could have left the Vraska on the top of my deck instead of proliferating, but now we've got a lethal Vraska in hand and on the battlefield. But yeah, if they find duress and a another copy of Bitter Triumph, they could potentially clear both Vraskas. 
Liliana takes care of Spelunker, so all of a sudden we could be in a bit of trouble. They found an Avarice. Cut down, so yeah, no duress. So apparently no way to deal with our uh, Planeswalker. They could take up Liliana twice to get rid of the Vraska in hand, but that still leaves the Vraska in play, which can ultimate next turn to instantly win the game. So our opponent goes digging with Avarice. They're at two. If they found a removal spell for Vraska, there's also the Ward 1 they have to pay for. Sacrifices must be made. So they can't both duress and take care of Vraska. So the Ward 1 potentially coming in handy. And yeah, there's a bitter triumph. Pono needs to pay Ward. And it's very much possible this last card was another duress. But now we can just play Vraska and win the game. Sweet. It's a pretty epic battle here against Mono Black. And uh, yeah, that was a good showcase of what this combo is capable of. Wins out of nowhere. The deck still is functional without a combo, with all the plus one counter synergies especially. Sometimes you just play kind of a nice mid-range game with some removal spells, keeping aggro in check, and then most of your green creatures are two for ones or better that can uh, carry a game by themselves. But every now and then you just level up your innkeeper's talent, something you want to be doing anyways, and then all of a sudden a top deck Vraska wins you the game. So yeah, the combo seems to be the real deal, and there's still potentially lots of ways to incorporate this combo in various decks, but I've been pretty happy with this build so far. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.